Today on the show, it's Kick-Ass 2. We're going to be talking about the comics that the upcoming movie is based off of. And we're also going to be talking about the final installment of Kick-Ass, Kick-Ass 3, which just started coming out in monthly. So the upcoming movie is based off of not one, but two graphic novels. Uh, one of them being Kick-Ass 2 Prelude Hit Girl, and the other one being Kick-Ass 2. So if you've seen Kick-Ass and you want to start getting into the comic books, I want to caution you to not be lazy and think that just because you've seen the movie, you don't need to read the first comic and you just skip ahead to Hit Girl and Kick-Ass 2. No, totally don't do that because in the first comic, there are key continuity differences to the movie, so you might not know what's going on if you just skip ahead. So don't be lazy. Eh, I don't know. Why don't you just tell me what happened in Kick-Ass 1 so I can start reading 2 now? Well, if you really want to be a bum about it, uh, there are two key differences that you need to be aware of. One of those is that Katie does not get with Dave after he confesses that he's not really gay. I'm also not gay. What? Yeah, she tells him to fuck off and kick rocks. Second off, Hit Girl's mother is not dead. So there's that as well. I'm not gonna give away everything because I don't wanna spoil it, but those are the two key differences. Yeah. So let's talk about Hit Girl. Uh, this one is all about Minnie McCready uh, going to a new home and trying to integrate into society. Uh, as I said earlier, in Kick-Ass 1, her mother isn't dead, so she moves back in with her mom and her new stepdad, Marcus, uh, who was the cop in the first one. Uh, and in this one, she's also training Dave to be a better kick-ass. Uh, she also has to deal with some more mob stuff who's coming after her family and giving Marcus some trouble, so she's got some fun things to do there. And uh, yeah, it's all from her perspective. And I must say, I think out of the three, I really enjoyed Hit Girl the most. Kick-Ass 2 picks up right after the events of Hit Girl. Uh, and in this one, I think the main focus, I could say, is all about escalation. Uh, in this one, Dave joins a super team. They've, they've escalated, now they're banding together. There's all sorts of other real life superheroes out there. Uh, and it also details the triumphant return of Red Mist, now known as the Motherfucker, uh, who has in turn started his own super villain league. So, and they've got big plans for New York, and uh, he's also got big plans for Kick-Ass and Hit Girl, he wants to get back at them. It's kind of a revenge thing going on. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's Kick-Ass too, without going into too much detail. So now let's talk about some things from the comics that I'm really looking forward to seeing in the movie, and also some things in the comics that I hope they cut out of the movie. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Why wouldn't you want there to put things in the movie from the comic? Well, I think that it would change the tonality a bit from the first movie to the second if they keep some of the stuff from the comics in there, because as I said earlier, uh, the comics are a little bit darker and the movie was a bit more lighthearted and optimistic, and I like the optimistic version better. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's get into my top three things that I hope to see in the movie from the comic book. Number one, uh, I really hope that they put the whole Hit Girl, Mean Girls situation in there uh, in the Hit Girl comic. When she's going to school nowadays, she's got to deal with this Mean Girls situation and uh, she's like having a really hard time figuring out how to deal with it because she's good at killing people, not dealing with teenage girls. So uh, it's really funny, she strikes a deal with Dave where it's like, you teach me how to be a normal kid, I'll teach you how to be a superhero. Uh, and it's, it's just really funny. It's, and it's, I don't know, being a girl, I like watching that sort of crap because I had to deal with it myself growing up, so. One of my favorite pages in the whole comic is this one right here where Mindy is at her father's grave and she's, she's talking to him, she's upset, she's confiding in him. She says, Daddy, you taught me how to blind a man with my thumbs, build a bomb with the contents of a kitchen cabinet, and skin a wolf with my bare hands. I've shot people, choked people, even drowned a motherfucker. Why can't I handle these bitches? <laughs> like, she's so bummed because she does not know how to deal with these teenage girls. And I love it, I love it because teenage girls, I think, murdering someone is probably easier than dealing with teenage girls. Maybe she's never kissed a boy. Maybe I'll jam my foot up your snatch. Number two. 
I'm really excited to see Jim Carrey's performance as Colonel Stars and Stripes. In the comic book, the character is kind of interesting. He's not like a big standout character necessarily, but uh, I have to admit that I kind of totally like Jim Carrey. I grew up with him. Uh, I grew up watching him on In Living Color, uh, doing the Fire Marshal Bill stuff. I love Ace Ventura. The mask is a little weird, but the thing is, I'm just excited to see him playing a weird character again because he's so good at it. Like I just, I enjoy the absurdity of Jim Carrey. Uh, it is a little odd, however, that he is disavowing it and saying that he wishes that he wasn't a part of it, which is odd because you haven't seen him do anything in a while, and then he's finally doing something again, and then, I don't know, it seems like an odd career choice. I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about seeing what he does with the character, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And try to have fun. Otherwise... What's the point? Number three, I'm really looking forward to the climactic fight scene uh, between Hit Girl and Mother Russia. Uh, she is a super villainous character, and uh, it's all about has Hit Girl finally met her match? You know, she's finally going up against someone that is like tough as fuck, just like she is. And uh, the comic did a really fun thing with that, and I really hope to see a lot of the same stuff in the movie. There is one thing from the comic books that I hope that they don't put into the new movie. And I doubt that they would, because I think it would just be too big of a bummer and would take all, like, all the fun lightheartedness out of it, uh, which is Katie getting gang raped. It's kind of a bummer in the comic. Uh, like I said earlier, she's not dating Dave, but uh, I just don't think that that would really work on screen, but I don't really think that they're gonna do it either, so. So you may or may not know, but there is a Kick-Ass 3 in the works. Uh, it just started coming out in monthly issues, uh, and it is supposed to be the final installment of the Kick-Ass, I guess, trilogy, although there's kind of a fourth one, but whatever. And to talk about the third one, I feel like I need to talk about the premise of the first and the second one. So here we go. I feel like in the first Kick-Ass, uh, it really centers around Dave being thrilled at the idea of him being a superhero and being like, I wanna do something more with my life and I'm just an ordinary student. I just wanna help people. Why not be a superhero? And so he tries it, uh, things get really weird, but he keeps going. And then in the second installment, um, as I said earlier, it's really all about escalation. We're taking things to the next level. So now Dave is seeing this next level and seeing the consequences of being a superhero. And he has to make that decision, uh, do I keep going or is this too much for me? And I feel like in the third Kick-Ass, uh, I feel like it's really Dave making the decision to become a superhero and transcending from just like pretending to be a hero to actually being one like full time. Uh, something that I really enjoyed in the third one was uh, he's kind of hanging out with all these other uh, real life superhero type people and he keeps finding himself, holding himself to a higher standard than his compatriots do, you know? I mean, they still are kind of half ass about it and he's kind of getting annoyed with that uh, and I really like that angle a whole lot and I, I'm I'm really interested to see where it goes and to see if he really does like decide to do it for reals for reals and that's like his whole thing for the rest of his life or not. Final thoughts. Uh, I will say I'm a little disappointed that Matthew Vaughn isn't coming back to direct the second one. Uh, he did such a good job with the first one, but I am excited to see what Jeff Wadlow does with it. Uh, he wrote the screenplay and he's directing it. And if he does anything as nearly as good as Matthew Vaughn, then I'll be happy. And you can probably expect to see a Kick-Ass 3 in a few years as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how this goes. And I think that this could really become a really great superhero movie trilogy, uh, if all goes according to plan. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can be sure that you're gonna be hearing from me about Kick-Ass 2. I'll let you know how I feel about it at a later date.